we're gonna save and close it okay then we're gonna go to the balance sheet tab let's see what happened what happened k paso and then so now we've got the increase in the payments to deposit which is an account you would kind of think would be under the checking account as we discussed before but it's down here because it acts more like an other current asset even though it's basically a cash account if i go into that now we've got uh this amount for string music the other side's a split account because we had two line items on the sales receipt so if i go into that there's the form boom that's for the full amount uh 2390 also note that if you deposited this into the checking account note that it would show on the checking account as an increase but not with a deposit form but rather a sales receipt form that's what i'm talking about about sorting the transactions it'd be kind of nice to have all your deposits in the checking account or all your increases in the checking account be from deposit forms because then you can sort for the increases by deposit form if you have a bunch of other stuff that are increases to it then you got to make sure you pick those up if you're trying to find all the deposits or increases all right let's go back and then the other side is on the income statement the PL. let's run it to refresh it go down to the to the sales item and there it is so we got the sales receipt two line items the 1500 the 777 and there they are notice the the tax is not uh populated so i'm going to close that out that's because the sales tax is going to be back on the balance sheet in the middle tab and scrolling down scrolling down i put it under the california department i didn't put it there they made that account but that's our sales tax account because that's who i said that we were paying for the sales tax they're th they're worse than mobsters over there anyways there it is we're gonna go back and then we're gonna go back and say say then uh we also have the inventory going down so inventory assets will go into that and inventory has decreased so it's decreasing down here we've got two line items for it notice that these two amounts 1200 is not on the sales receipt but the system is recording it from the sales receipt because it's known by the items that we set up. Closing that back out, scrolling up again, back, and then go to the income statement finally. And then the cost of the goods that are sold has those two amounts there as well. The impact then on the income statement was the increase to the sales minus the cost of goods sold. Now also note, balance sheet. We now have these payments in payments to deposit. That amount, 22,890,85, if I go to the first tab and then go to the plus button, and if I was, to, I'm not going to deposit it right now, but if I look at the deposit form, notice that they populated all these items that are from the payments and the sales receipts that I put into the undeposited ones or the funds to be deposited or whatever they call it right there, the 22 or uh, 890. So it gives us a nice, easy little system, QuickBooks does for us to check those off uh, when we make the deposit and group them together so that they can be deposited in, in a lump sum. So that's a kind of a, a nice tool. So I'm gonna close that back out. And that's that, back to the balance sheet. Also, inventory was impacted. Let's take a look at the sub ledger for inventory. The units go to the tab to the right, right click on it, duplicate it so I can open up another report another report we can never have too many reports because they're so cool i'm going to close the hamburger i'll type in here inventory valuation summary <clears throat> and uh date 12 31 i'll just make it the end of the year this but just and then so the, the year to date i could say but there it is there's our our units and we're come out to 38 8 7 8 38 8 7 8 so that looks good i think that's what we had right so now we don't have as much of it. We didn't have any impact on the accounts receivable. So if you're at the cash register and you're just getting paid at the point of sale, if you're at like a food truck, then you're probably, of course, not doing as much calling people over the phone and trying to get them to pay you and that kind of stuff tracking internally. But if you do have a discussion with a, with a client, then you would go to the tab to the left and you can sort these transactions. If they come in, you can go to your sales tab over here and we can go into our customers and we can then go down and see who did we make that sale to string music and we can say yeah there's the sale that we made and so on and so forth if you were in the business view by the way 
that would be under the get paid and pay tab and then you'd have your customers in the get paid area now you could also find the same information if i hit the the ham boogie and go into the sales in the all uh sales stuff closing that out and then you can sort by the sales receipts so you could say transaction type and sales receipt boom and so there's that if you were in the business view by the way that's in a slightly different location in bookkeeping and then transactions up top and then the sales receipts and you can locate it there so a little bit different location on the business view.